Do you have to have a quiet mind to awaken or to get enlightened? Well, I would recommend a quiet mind, which is not quite the same as do you have to have a quiet mind? It's like, do you need a teacher? Well, I would recommend a teacher, which is not the, quite the same as saying you need a teacher. Because the truth is, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know the myriad of different ways this can happen. I don't understand all of this. I just know what I know. And maybe I don't even know that. I mean, what do I really know? I don't feel I know very much at all. And I'm certainly no authority on these things. But I'm sharing with you what I... I'm just sharing with you my experience, my understanding. I would recommend a quiet mind. My suspicion is that there are no mandatory things that are required. There are no necessary preconditions to enlightenment, to awakening. My feeling is that this can just happen. But what do I know? I don't know. My sense is that a quiet mind is immensely helpful and a teacher is immensely helpful so much so that I would say and I could be wrong but so much so I would say that a quiet mind and a teacher are almost indispensable but as I said what do I know what does your heart tell you Said, listen to your heart don't listen to the mind and ask it, do I need a quiet mind? What does it say? For me, I didn't like the teaching that you need a quiet mind because I, I, prefer I prefer to think about things. And I like the teachers who said you don't need a quiet mind. But when I looked into my heart and I asked my heart, what is the right way for me? My heart often said to me, be still. My mind used to come up with rationalizations why I, don't, I didn't need to be still. You don't need to be still. Oneness is always here. The self is always realized. Why, what need is there for stillness? That logically makes no sense. That's true, right? What need is there for stillness? Isn't this just another obsession? An obsession with another subtle object, the subtle object of stillness. Well, what does your heart tell you? The mind can come up with many theories and it can justify many different types of spiritual pursuit and many types of spiritual practice. And the mind can also find ways of justifying not engaging in spiritual practice and not doing things. But what does the heart say? For me, the heart says, be still. Be still. Relax. Feel happy. Let go. Allow your heart to open and allow love to come in. Don't pretend to know things that you don't know. Be humble, be genuine. And the heart might say this, to, say this to you verbally, it might speak in words. But for me, more often than not, it spoke these things in a word, wordless way. Without speaking, it spoke to me. I kind of knew what it was saying, even though there were no words, there was a feeling saying, Tom, just chill out, relax, love. And then this devotional sense, devote yourself. And the mind was thinking, this is stupid. This is ridiculous. 
but eventually the mind grew weary and tired and I thought well I thought fuck it I might as well just listen to my heart because I've been struggling so long what happens if I actually listen to my heart why don't I just give it a go and I found myself collapsing to my knees on the floor in devotional outpourings sometimes tears Why not? Why not see where the heart takes you? So I would recommend a, a quiet mind. Without a quiet mind, is you almost can't even hear the heart speaking. You just hear the ego speaking. You listen to your heart, you don't you actually hear the ego. And the ego might convince you that it is the heart. So for me, the true teachings are in silence and not in words. And the words are just superficialities that can assume an importance at a certain part of a seeker's journey. And for me, they were incredibly important. The words and the concepts were incredibly important, which is probably why I speak about this. But then you can see that the words and for those of you who have this understanding who understand well especially for those of you who who understand the teachings conceptually but yet in your heart you know the freedom isn't realized the understanding is there Maybe you know all the teachings back to front. Maybe you could even sit here and say what I'm saying. But yet, you know the freedom's not here. See, then you know that the real freedom is not in the words. <laughs> 